lot of tribes in Arizona, uh, they do have these issues with water. Cities are growing around us and they're always encroaching upon our water. We um, have a lot of things that are going on back home with our water rights, keeping it clean, keeping it secure, and making sure that it's healthy for our community. And right now it's not. For us, legal personhood was just a mechanism of the British common law that suited our agenda. And our agenda was about highlighting an indigenous philosophy and values that have permeated this ancestral river since time beginning. What we were really doing is trying to give legal expression within the paradigm of a European-based legal system to the kawa, the values that go back through many generations. Kutiawa te mata puno te ora. The river is the source of our well-being, physical, mental and spiritual. Is Ereko Mai Tawa Nui, Mai Tika Hui Maunga, Hitangaroa. The great river flows from the mountains to the sea, the river being a inseparable whole. Koa Tiawa, Kotiawa, Koa. The river and the people thereof are inseparable. Nga Manga Iti, Nga Manga Nui, E Hono Hono Kawana, Kaputa. By the small and by the large tributaries, they all flow into one river, creating one river. And that basically highlights that the community of the river is inclusive of everyone. It's about ensuring and instilling a sense of responsibility across the whole of our community. What would it look like if we started first and foremost with our worldview, our customary laws and practices, our protocols and ways of thinking and ways of living, and then went into how that fits in with the practicality of interfacing with colonial law? I feel like in America, like we don't really take care of our resources as much as we could. You know, we have a lot of beautiful places in our country, but unfortunately, I think because of capitalism and because of um, the investment that all these different companies make in the land, it, it's being torn up. And here, you know, being in a place like this, it just shows the health of the river is reflective on the health of the people, you know, very strong and rich in their culture and speak their language and you know every part of the generations that are there know who they are and know what their responsibility is as caretakers of the Wanganui River. Just coming here I'm seeing that things connect, how things are connecting and for me I wasn't really getting that at home, there wasn't all these connections. Yeah, you knew things were tied tied to you as a people, the land and the water. But in this day and age, um, I think a lot of a lot of living that way mm. is is kind of a miss. This is the most that I've ever been around water and in the water. And, you know, the atmosphere here, uh, the people are so humbling and loving. And the closeness and the bond 
uh, with the water, connecting with the water, because, you know, growing up on the reservation, we're desert people, but water is life. When I'm here and when I was out in the river and, and swimming and feeling the water, it was just very powerful because it's still a river. I think about our river. The only thought that comes to my head is that our river is ill. And when the water becomes sick, we become sick. And when we become sick, you know, it's not good. And that colonized thought, we always think about reclamation, but you know, it really is the healing. You know, how do we heal? How do we go back and heal the river? How do we still heal from where we are now? I don't like to talk about healing as such, but that's what it's all about. It's all back to that kuo te awa, kuo te awa, kuo, or that whole idea of I am this and this is me sort of thing. So I'm now thinking about my whole body is the whole world. This part of me is my, my awatupua. The other part of me is, <laughs> you know, is, is you guys. We're at the places that are really unwell. And I don't want to be unwell. because I think that's where that concept really goes. So you guys do your job. <laughs> <laughs> do your job well, because <laughs> I want to be well. <laughs> living ancestors overlooked us last night, I think, because I had the best night of sleep in my life. Yeah. I haven't had a good night of sleep in a long, long time. Some of the things that I've learned or heard over the time that we've been here, that sense of pride in protecting the river, guardianship of the river, um, the pride that comes into that. And we feel it sometimes when we win cases against the local and federal governments in regards to the river, um, but maybe looking at it not as a law victory, but more as a spiritual victory. That's something that I, I look forward to getting back and um, teaching the, especially the young people of uh, my reservation, um, those kind of things. The other nations here have relationship to the river, but it's a daily thing. It's a daily thing with the Maori people. The nations do it at certain times, I guess, connect with their river and we're stewards of the river. You know, the Colorado River was given to us by our creator, so we were stewards. And with the Maori people, they're guardians, you know, and the river um, speaks to them and they get their who they are from the river. And with the nations, you know, we don't view it that way. We're more westernized in, in that way of just, hey, it's our water. You know, it's our water. We can do whatever we want. We have to start taking a different viewpoint, viewpoint of um, the Colorado River. To articulate our own customary laws, our own practices, and there being a response to that, that to me is what has happened here in New Zealand. That's what the New Zealand government did. It responded to the customary laws of the Whanganui River people. Imagine if we made that same commitment to our rivers back home. Maybe we'd see the Colorado River flow once again in all its fullness, all the way from the mountains to the sea.